فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا دا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد بن عبد الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Brothers and sisters This inshallah ta'ala is our first sit It's an introduction inshallah ta'ala to our online madrasatul umariya Brothers and sisters Today inshallah ta'ala I will be speaking about Al-manhajiyah fi talab al-ilm The methodology in how to seek knowledge Many people they want to learn the sharia and they want to acquire a good portion of the religion and have comprehension and understanding of it But what doesn't allow them to go forward and progress is they don't know where to start from they don't know what to do and they don't also know how to do it. Inshallah ta'ala, in this sit, I will give you an insight, inshallah ta'ala, in how to seek knowledge, where to start from, what you should do and what you shouldn't do, inshallah ta'ala. Brothers and sisters who are listening, the ways to seek knowledge, طرق تحصيل العلم, the way to seek knowledge, the means, the path to take are it revolves around three main points. Any student of knowledge who wants to embark on this path of seeking knowledge, three things are what he has to come with. Number one is al hifz memorization. A student of knowledge, if he's not memorizing, he will be deficient in his learning. The second thing, inshallah ta'ala, is Al-Qira'ah, reading. A student of knowledge who doesn't take time out to read will also be deficient in learning and acquiring knowledge. And the third thing, inshallah ta'ala, is Hilaqut Tadris. To come to the circles of knowledge. To come to the places where knowledge are being given. If a student of knowledge does not go to a scholar and take knowledge from him, he will be deficient in his acquiring of knowledge. A lot of you may ask yourselves, what do I memorize? How do I memorize? They are very common questions that are asked. Let's go back to the first one of the three things that a student of knowledge needs to gain knowledge. One, hifz, memorization. There are things that a student of knowledge needs to do in order to be able to memorize in the most efficient way and to make sure that that, knowledge, that memorization, it goes to his long-term long long memory. That it goes into his long-term memory. Number one, ikhlasun niyyah lillahi ta'ala. To do this action for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sake alone. Husnul maqsad. Your intention is purely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once you do that, you will gain a great portion of knowledge, insha'Allah ta'ala. A person, 
gains knowledge in accordance to their intention. Number two, al bud anil maasi wal atham. Stay far away from sins. Stay way, stay far away from falling into the prohibitions. Stay away and stay far from going against the commands of your Lord. Any student of knowledge who wants to memorize has to stay away from sins. And you're all familiar with the statement of Imam al-Shafi'i, Muhammad ibn Idris al-Shafi'i, in which he said to his teacher, Waki' ibn Jarrah al-Ru'asi, he said, شَكَوْتُ إِلَىٰ وَكِيعٍ بِسُوءُ حِفْظِي فَأَرْشَدَنِي إِلَىٰ تَرْكِ الْمَعَاصِي وَقَالَ إِنَّ الْعِلْمَ نُورٌ وَنُورُ اللَّهِ لَا يُهْدَىٰ لِعَاصِي He said, I complained to my teacher about my memorization weakening. And so when he went and he complained to him, he said, my memorization has started to weaken. And Imam Waki' ibn Jarrah, he said to him, that this knowledge you are taking is light. And sinning will extinguish this light. Allah does not give a person knowledge. And then they are able to sin. So stay away from sinning. Number three. تَعْوِيدُ النَّفْسِ عَلَى الْحِفْظِ It is to consistently train yourself to memorize. A lot of the people don't want to memorize. They just want to rely on books. Number Four, المذاكرة Revision Taking a person you know, a friend of yours And sitting with him And reading what you've memorized on him And asking him to correct you if you have If you have weakness in your memorization المذاكرة Revision Number five كثرة التكرار للمحفوظ To always go over What you have memorized And not to think since you've memorized this, you don't have to go over it again. That isn't the case. You always go over it. And last but not least, اِخْتِيَارُ الزَّمَانِ وَالْمَكَانِ الْمُنَاسِبَيْنِ To choose the best time and to choose the best place. Many people want to memorize and they want to memorize at times when they are tired. At times when their mind is occupied with other things. Or they want to memorize in a place which is busy, other people are speaking. They want to memorize in front of the computer. They want to memorize in front of a 50-inch plasma television. That won't work. So to choose the right time and to also choose a place where nothing will take your concentration. Those are the six things that help a student of knowledge seek knowledge, uh, gain knowledge. Those are the six things that allows a student of knowledge to memorize. And that is what we were talking about. Number two, al qiraa reading. Now some of you may ask a question again. What do you mean reading? How do you read? What do you read? There are inshallah ta'ala, things that a student of knowledge, he has to observe. And he has to look after when he's reading. There is a manner in which you read. Number one, اختيار الكتاب المناسب That the student of knowledge, he chooses the right book to read. A lot of people don't know what book to read. And inshallah ta'ala, I will speak about that in our up upcoming points when I speak about what we will be not learning and that which we will be gaining in our online uh, program, Madrasat al Umariya, inshallah ta'ala. To choose the right book. Number two is اختيار الوقت المناسب To choose the right time to read. Again, some people try to read in the presence of other people. That isn't correct. When you're reading, you have to find a silent place where there's no one. Or there is little movements taking place. If you have a local library, go to that library and read there. Number three is what? تقييد الفوائد على طرة الكتاب The student of knowledge should have a pen when he's reading. And what he does is, on the cover of the book, he writes the benefits, or he even has a little book, a little notebook, where he writes the little benefits that he comes across. And he writes what volume and what page he finds those benefits in. That is one of the ways to read. 
Number four is تَنْوِيعُ فِي الْقِرَاءَةِ بَيْنَ الْفُنُونَ It is that the student of knowledge, he doesn't just read one field of the Sharia, but he tries to differ between different fields. Because what happens is, if you only read one field, sometimes you become bored of reading that field. So if you read Usul al fiqhia and then you read Mustalah al-Hadith, and then you read uh, Fiqh, and then you read this and you read that, then your mind will feel uh, energized, and, and your mind as well, and your heart, and you will also look forward to going back to the subject or the field that you were studying days before. Number five is the book you're going to read to have an overall idea of it. And inshallah ta'ala, when we study um, the books that we study, inshallah ta'ala, we will do something known as Mabadi'ul Ashar, in which you're going to learn the 10 most basic things that a student of knowledge has to have of every book he is studying or she is studying. It is called what? It is having an overall understanding of that particular field which you are studying or that book which you're reading. The third one, inshallah ta'ala, is Hila Qutadiris, circles of knowledge. Or in our case right now, coming to this online program and participating by making sure that you listen, in, you listen to the recordings. What is the benefits that it would have in studying from a person of knowledge or studying from a student of knowledge? Why can't I just go and read the book myself and understand the knowledge myself? Why do I have to come to this uh, online program? Or why do I have to go to a circles of knowledge? For two reasons. First of all is اِقْتِصَارُ الطَّرِيقِ لِطَلَبِ الْعِلْمِ the, the teacher or the instructor who is teaching you will instruct you to the shortest he will instruct you to the shortest path that you can gain knowledge because he's experienced he knows that route and he will give you the shortest route in which you could take in order to obtain knowledge in the most effective way and in the shortest of time the duration is very short the second one is ma'rifatul mustalahat inda ahli al-ilm a student of knowledge if he reads a book himself he may not know, know the terminologies that are being used here. And the teacher would be able to tell you that this term that is used here by this scholar, he means this, not what, not what other scholars mean by it. And who's, who's able to tell you that? An instructor, a teacher, a person who's higher than you in knowledge. He will give you what? Um, the terminologies of the scholars and the wordings, what they meant by it. And the way they authored their books. The Salaf they used to say, لا تأخذ القرآن من مصحفي. Don't take your Quran from a person who read, who read it from the Mus'haf, who just studied it by himself. Don't. ولا العلم من صحفي. And knowledge, don't take it from a person who he, he only looked and he researched and he saw it himself. Don't take knowledge from that person. Take knowledge from its people. A person who took it from others, who are people of knowledge. And until the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. وَلِذَلِكَ The Salaf they used to say, مَنْ كَانَ شَيْخُ كِتَابُهُ Anyone who his teacher is his book. He only took knowledge from books. He only took knowledge from you, uh, internet, YouTube. ها كَانَ خَطَأُهُ أَكْثَرُ مِنْ صَوَابِهِ His mistakes, his shortcomings are going to be far greater than that which he gets right. So it's important that a student sits with a teacher and he takes that knowledge from the, the knees of a teacher and takes it from him. That was the first part of how to gain knowledge. The path in obtaining knowledge. Point number two, inshallah ta'ala. So I said, the path to gain knowledge is three things. Al-hifd wal-qira'a wa hilaqu al-tadris. Memorization, reading, and coming to the circles of knowledge. Now we're going to talk about what are the knowledge in which I have to gain. The knowledge that a person who wants to embark on being a student of knowledge, what knowledge does he have to understand? Or what knowledge does he take? Number one, write this down. 
the knowledge is divided into two. The knowledge in the Sharia that you're going to learn are categorized into two um, headings. The first one is called Uloom, which are Al Ghayat. They are the objective knowledges. What do I mean by objective? It is what all the other fields of the religion work for. It is what you are finally aiming to gain. So it's called Ulumul Ghayat. The objective knowledges. Um, and it is what? It is a tafsir, the commentary of the Quran. Number two is Al Hadith, the traditions of the Messenger. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Number three is Al Fiqh, jurisprudent rulings. And four is Al Aqidah, Islamic creed. Those four that I mentioned are called Ulum Al Ghayat. Ulum Al Maqasid. They are both called. It is what everyone wants to finally gain. But you can't go to Ulum Al Maqasid, Ulum Al Ghayat, Ulum Al Asliya, whichever you want to call it. You will never be able to gain it unless you study the second form of knowledge there is, which is called Ulumul Ala, which is the instrumental knowledges. It's called an instrumental knowledge. It, it, it works, it's an instrument to allow you to understand a tafsir, commentary of the Quran, al hadith, the Prophet's traditions, al fiqh, the jurisprudent rulings. And last but not least, Aqidah, Islamic creeds. Those four, there are instruments that a student of knowledge needs in order to understand these four. And they are as follows. The Quran, the instrument that you have to have, or the knowledge which you need to have in order to study tafsir is called Usulu Tafsir. It's called what? Usulu Tafsir. The second one is... Um, Mustalah al-Hadith. Mustalah al-Hadith is an instrumental knowledge that allows the student of knowledge to understand the Hadith. Why is it Sahih? How is it Sahih? What makes it Sahih? And etc. Fiqh, it has an instrumental knowledge. Ulum al What is it? Usul al-Fiqh. Usul al-Fiqh. And Aqidah, it requires the understanding of the Quran and the Sunnah and the Arabic language. It requires the understanding of the Quran and the Sunnah and the Arabic language. The Arabic language that you need are these three. And Nahw, grammar, Balagha, eloquency. And the th third one which is Sarf. Sarf which is morphology so every student of knowledge he has to study this methodology this sciences he has to have understanding of it in order to be able to understand the Quran and the Sunnah now inshallah ta'ala I'm going to go into details in the ulum al maqasid the objective knowledges and also the ulumu al-ala which is the instrumental knowledge i'm going to go to each one in details inshallah ta'ala in my upcoming uh, sit